All right, hope you guys find this one interesting. It's the red kiwi. I didn't even know there was a red kiwi. Uh, and then there's a golden kiwi. And it seems like the red kiwi is like a variant of the golden kiwi. So like, let's see what the red is. That's what I'm thinking. All right, so there we go. Shove some of the red seed area uh, into that tube and some of the regular green yellow area. And there we go, we got them in the tube. You want to acidify it with this 5% formic acid because anthocyanin pigments are more stable at low, low pH. So in acidic conditions, and we have to use formic acid uh, on LCMS. Alright, so now we're going to vortex these, try to get that formic acid mixed all the way down. Get some shakes. Alright, so maybe I put a little too much in, but I really want to try to get that right color. Alright, I'm throw it on the sonicator for a sec. So that's finally down at the bottom there. You can see I got way, way too much kiwi. It's like a mill of kiwi. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to acidify it uh, with some of this 5% uh, formic acid in water. And we're going to do a water extraction. And then we're going to spin that out and take some of that and dilute it into this 80-20 methanol. And so we're going to try to do like a kind of like an isolation of these red pigments um, and, and see what we can figure out. All right. Just like two minutes. You don't want to heat these because the anthocyanins fall apart in heat. But I do want to rupture the cells to get more of that red pigment out. So now we're going to go ahead and just spin it out, as you probably would guess. And then we're going to try to pull some of that hopefully red colored top layer. And up the centrifuge. Let's see what this looks like. Well, that green one's got a little bit of green and yellow. All right. All right, now the red one, the great reveal. Perfect. I don't know if I even need to do anything. I'm gonna dilute it, it's a little too red, but that's exactly what we were going for. All right, so diluted it at 5X, get in that 5% formic acid to keep the anthocyanin stability. I mean, you can see the color. Maybe, we'll try it at this concentration, maybe we'll be able to get it, but that is pretty diluted. All right, so here we go, we've diluted them out. Red versus gold, kiwi. We're putting this on the low res single quad first because it has the extended wavelength PDA detector, so we know which peak is the red peak. There's absolutely no point in wasting the rest of it, especially that red one. The red one's so good. Cheers. What is this like? It's like sweet and tart, so good. All right, here we go. Gold kiwi versus the red kiwi. There are not a lot of differences. We do have a difference right here. In the red kiwi, um, and then this big pro, this big peak right here that's in both of them. Oh, it's oh yeah, it's but look at this! But look at this! I ran a kiwi, and then I got a protein signal, and then I just broadly deconvolved it and got a mass at 17k, and then I searched 17k killed all in protein in fruit, and the first thing that pops up is kiwi fruit. Come on, there's no way I'm that good. Uh, is that protein charge state series of that 17k? allergen protein called Curola, which is a ripening protein. It is a major latex ripening protein, uh, and it's one of the first IgE allergens found in the fruit families. Uh, so people are, I guess, very allergic to kiwi fruit. Oh man, so if you're allergic to kiwi, that 17 kilodalton protein, Curola, is your problem. Sorry. The major difference we're looking for is actually in the color. What is the red pigment? So you can open up the dioderate channel for both samples. And they look pretty similar. Again, we have differences out here. And the color we're looking for is something in the red, so something in the absorbance of 500, there you go, somewhere in that four to 500 to 600 nanometer range. So we're gonna extract that out from the red. Same area from the golden. And so there's the peak that corresponds to that right there. And you can see that's that red pigment thing, the cyanide pigment. So to figure out that mass, you wanna go ahead and align that area for the mass from the red versus um, from the golden. And the peak that's new is this peak at 580.9. So 580.9 uh, 
uh, is that red pigment mass. Let's try to figure out what that is. All right, finishing up the red kiwi data, figuring out that anthocyanin red pigment. Zevo Q top, got to use the high res so we can get fragment data. So again, we're looking for either that 580 mass or something that associates with it. Maybe that 96, I don't really know. Let's go ahead and look at it here. So we're running it with yeah, and so it's got to be somewhere, somewhere down low here is my guess. The way we're going to do this is we're going to pull up both the MS and all the MS data, because we don't know if it's fragment. We're going to extract out this area around 581, so it's supposed to be 580.9. And so then we're going to see areas where we're not only seeing it in the MS1, we're also seeing it in the MS2. I'm liking this one right here. So then if we go ahead and we look at just the MS1 data here, there's that 580, so this one's saying it's 581.1. That does look singly charged. So then we're gonna go in, we're gonna find that same fragment right there, and it is breaking like an anthocyanin. So anthocyanins typically are sugars conjugated to flavones. So this is the 287 base flavone. See, anthocyanins, the, the flavonium ion, the base flavone, you can have all these different masses. Cyanidine is the mass at 287. So this is gonna be a cyanidine-based pigment, uh, which are typically reds and blues and things like that. So I think that, I mean, they typically are found in fruits as well. So pretty, makes sense. Makes sense it could be a cyanidine. So it's a cyanidine-based pigment. So now when we search it in HMDB here, we know we're looking for uh, cyanidine uh, based anthocyanin with a 581 mass and that's going to be a uh, shift of what is that one 581 minus 287 so that's 294 shift so this fragment channel looks like it did a little bit better job there's our 581 we have the 287 then we got the mass it's missing in between there 448 so this may give us the right space and we need to figure out all the sugars and acids conjugated. All right, so this one's a 161, maybe 162 shift. And then the next one, if that's 162, right, so it'd be 581 minus 162. 162 is a glucose. And so that would be 419 minus 287, so 132 shift. That's the other sugar acid. MDB's getting it as well, except it's using the trade name Sambubioside. Sambubioside, if you search that, is, right, you can look on here, that is the xylo, so the synonym, that's the xyloglucoside. So uh, it's just the sugar acid, the sugar conjugates have all sorts of different names. You search cyanidine, anthocyanin, and natural pigments in red flesh, red kiwi fruit, and it looks like it could be a galactoside, a xylo galactoside. Um, and so if we look up xylose, we know galactoside and glucoside are both 162 conjugates because they're 180 minus the water of conjugation. If we look up xylose, it's kind of an unusual fruit sugar, wood sugar actually. Um, and that's 150, and so 150 minus 18 for the conjugation is 132. So this is going to be cyanidine xylose galactoside. That is the pigment, I guess I could have just looked it up, in the red kiwi.